Hey kids, here we are in my garage. I'm about to change the right side brake pads on my 2013 Mazda 3 hatchback. We've already got it jacked up and I've already changed the left side. It's the first time I've done it on this car. I've got over 90, I got 93,000 miles on here and I'm just changing the brake pads for the first time. And look at, look at here, can you see that? Look, I still got plenty of brake pad on there. In fact, I just measured it with my fancy dancy calipers right here. And I've got a little over a sixteenth of an inch left in that groove right there. So, what's that tell you? Well, I'm not one of them morons that ride down the road with their foot on the gas and the other foot on the brake. Those people are wearing out their, their pads so fast, they're probably changing them rubbing metal to metal at around 40, 45,000 miles, if not sooner. People learn how to keep your foot off the brake. <laughs> Only drive with one foot in an automatic. Don't, don't ride your brakes. 90,000 miles and these pads are still going strong. I could go another 20,000 miles on here the way I drive. But let's get busy with changing these pads. I've got my, oh dear, I got a problem here. I've got my phone popped up. I'm going to have to change something here. Y'all have to hang on just a second. Okay, kids, we're back. I don't know this phone thing. I've never made a video on a phone before, so we're, we're not doing too good. I think it's got a limit how long you can record, and it just stopped recording on its own. We'll see. So uh, you would have seen me take my tire off with my uh, taking the lug nuts off. Well, anyway, we got the tire off, and we're about to go to take the caliper off and get at them brake pads in there. Uh, I did notice a, a YouTube video on where some some girl a for effort she she got it done but she made a, several mistakes and uh, one of them was she took the bolts off on the back side of this thing to get that caliper off don't take the bolts off you don't need to do that you need to take the little caps off these little rubber plugs on the back that'll give you access to an allen screw see I just got one off right there can you see that right there see that little cap right there with the little ridges on it that just goes right in the little plug back there there's two of them one on top one on the bottom pop those puppies out and then you can get at them allen screws and knock them babies out so let's do that right now i'm gonna reach in there with my finger find that hole put this in here and i'm gonna loosen that up got me a rubber mallet got my allen wrench in there can you see that let me spin you around a little bit see Oh, uh, you can't see that too good. It's back behind there. I don't know how to record behind that tire. I suppose I could show you, but we're gonna just do, we're just gonna tap it right here. Knock that loose. I'm gonna get the one on the bottom while I got my mallet in my hand. Find that hole. There it goes. Tap that right there. Got that one off now. Now we're gonna unscrew them babies. so I can do it quicker. Here we go. How's that working? Now, once they come loose, they're still held on by that rubber surround around that thing. So what I do is I kind of cock my Allen wrench a little bit to the side and pull out at the same time. And it's a little bit difficult, I'll admit. But eventually, those will come loose. All right, we got that one out. Let's get to find that top one. We gotta undo it. Oh, we got the darn hydraulic hose in the way. All right, there we go. Pull that out of the way a little. Oh, we're getting there. There we go. All right, you don't have to pull them Allen head screws out all the way, just enough to clear the caliper. I may not have this bottom one far enough out. Let me see if I can pull it just a wee bit more. Like I said, it can be a little tough. 
get a hold of them things. There's nothing to grab. You got to grab it from the inside of the... There we go. Now it came out. I was just cocking my Allen wrench in there to get a bite on that and then pushing on that to, to pull that out right there. All right, we got those loose. Now I'm going to get my, my pliers here. I'm going to pop this spring out of here. Uh, make sure you got a good hold of that with your pliers because there's some spring on that. That thing go ding across the room and maybe hit you in the eye. So be careful with those. There's some tension in there. There we go. Got that. One side's out. There we go. We got that. Now I should be able to wiggle this off of here. I might have to get my pry bar out. There we go. It's starting to come loose now. Got me a little handy pry bar here. Hey, my little handy pry bar there. That way I can get a hold of things here. Can you see that right there? I'm getting that off there. I guess you can. Let's push on that. Push on that, and there we go. It slides right off of there. Oh, I'm going to run to the other side and get my box to hold my, hold my caliper up. Hang on. Be right back. Here we go. I haven't got my old beer box here. And that's just about the right height. To slide under here, get that stuff out of the way. And got that box under there. Now I can pull my caliper off and lay it down right here. Wonderful. That pad comes right out. Look at all that fine brake pad still left right there. Isn't that wonderful? Dry proper. Lasts longer. And also for those people, that, there's people, you get behind them, you ever notice they hit their brakes at every little curve they go around? Like, like they're going to go careening off the road out of control? Man, just slow down before you get to the curve and accelerate coming out of the curve. You people ride your brakes all the time. Doesn't make no sense to me. This other one here, got a big spring on the back of it. Just kind of pull and work that sucker out of there. I'll tell you what, getting it back in is a lot harder. That spring's pretty strong right there. All that there, and it's kind of rusty here, too. I'm going to grease up the other one get it in there. I have to squeeze it, though. Yeah, that pad looks good, doesn't it? Like I said, I'd go 20,000 miles easy on there. All right, let's get my new pad out here. Right here. Oh, boy. Got my new pads here. Ooh, just look how deep that groove is. Ooh. Going to be riding them babies for another 90,000 miles. All right. Now, I want to get my brake grease out here. See if I can tear this thing here. Oh, I'm going to get up and get the scissors. Hang on a minute. Go get the scissors. Cut that. It works a lot better with scissors than it does tearing it. Be right back. What did I do with them scissors? They're right here. I got the scissors. All righty. Here we go. Oh, hey, there it is. All right, we're back. We've got the brake grease right here. We're going to cut that little packet right there. It's got a little little groovy spot in it right there where the, where the grease will come out. There it is right there. So I'm going to cut that right there. I'm going to fold up from the bottom. Get all that grease working up towards the top. And as soon as I see it start to squeeze out there. There, now I've got it. Here it comes. Here it goes. There it is. I'm going to grease this pad up. You know how I tell how where to, where the grease needs to go? Where all the surfaces meet. If you look at your old pad, look on the back, you'll see that ring right there. That's where the caliper piston hits the pad. You want to grease that all up right around there. And you want to grease these here tabs up. makes it easier to go in there. So we're going to grease this here up good right here. All around here. Put a nice ring of grease on there, all around there, grease up them clips so we can slide them in there. Now, like I said, that part's not easy. I found out on the other side, I had to get some pliers and squeeze that puppy. Can you all see this over here? Let's see. Yeah, I think you can. All right, I'm going to line this up again with that. Oh, oh, oh I'm forgetting some. Wait a minute. Uh, you got to squeeze back the caliper. I happen to use a pair of wide jaw vice grips for mine. You can use a C-clamp. Uh, but a good thing to do is take the old pad, put it in front of the caliper like that, 
and then squeeze that puppy back in. There, let me move this out so I can get back behind it a little bit. All right. Oh, I got that wrong. I got to do that from out here. Here we go. Can y'all see what I'm doing? See that? It's kind of dark right there, ain't it? All right. I am squeezing that back a little bit. Squeeze. Let it let it go back up. The hydraulic fluid got to go back up the hose. And squeeze some more. Let it squeeze. Don't get in no hurry. You'll be fine. Squeeze a little more. Remember, you can do this just as well with a C clamp. Just don't be in a hurry. Let it let it go back. Give it time. Get all that fluid back up into your fluid housing up in the top. If you actually had someone, if I, we were watching that, we'd be watching that brake fluid rise in the uh, brake fluid reservoir up there. I'm going to keep doing this till I get it all squeezed up. Uh, you can see the you can see those allen heads right there now can't you see that in that little rubber boot that's where that little little cap goes right over that yeah right there that's what you take loose not them big bolts back there now if you're replacing your caliper the whole housing everything yeah you probably take those bolts off i haven't researched that don't know for sure but that's just a Calculated guess. All right, that just felt hard right there. I think we're there. Got that squeezed all the way back in the housing. Now I'll take that, get rid of that. And I'm gonna get this pad in there. All right, y'all looking at that right there? See that? I don't know if y'all can see that or not. But I'm gonna get that in there. Line that up with the hole right there. Nothing easy about it, but I found out if you take a pair of pliers, I was looking for my needle nose, that'd probably work well, but these here, so I'm squeezing it on the inside part of it, not the outside, the inside here. See, I can squeeze that together right there. Look at that, see it's squeezy, squeezy. All right, so I can squeeze that together pretty good. And then push that puppy in there. A little awkward right here. Oh, no, almost had it. There it starts to go. There we go. There we go. Now I got that last one to go. I'm going to go ahead and get my... Where did I put them? Here they are. Get my wide jaw vice grip and squeeze that puppy back in there the rest of the way. I got the two big clamps, two side ones, that one in the back. There it goes. There we go. Got her in there now. All right, y'all see that sitting in there? Pretty, pretty. All right, let's get the other one. And this one here just lays right here. Now we're going to slide that back on here. See how easy that is? I already got a pad slap. All right, look at that going on there like that. See how nice that was? Well, nothing to that. A little tricky to get them Allen screws lined up in the back back here. So we'll see if we can get that going. I had a little trouble with the other side, but we finally got it. Got to get that lined up. Ugh. Oh, I'm old. It's hard to do this. I'm 61 years old. Kind of hard working on the concrete. Let's get back here and see if we can line these puppies up. Alright, I'll just keep rounding and wiggling until it finally falls back in the hole. Don't put your spring on until you get these started. That's a mistake I made earlier. I had to take the spring back off. I didn't, probably never would have got them in there. Alright, push in and turn, push in and turn. They'll finally catch. I think I got it there. That one's good. Let's get the bottom one. That was easier than the other side. Of course, I forgot 
and left the darn spring on there. Shouldn't have done that. All right, push in and turn, push in and turn. I don't need my box anymore. Let's move that out of the way. All right, we're still recording, I think. Yeah. All right, turning them. Oh, yeah, we got that good. Got that good. Now I'm going to put that in there sideways and hit that with the mallet. Get that nice and snug. Not too much, not too little. By the way, what is this? Does it say what this is? No. That may be metric, that may be American. I don't know what size it is. I don't know what size Allen that is. Might be metric. Might be like a 7 millimeter or something. I don't know. All right, we got those in there. Now we're going to get our new spring. And we're going to... Oh, we moved you around here. Come back over here. Here we go. Here we go. There you go. Oh, stay there now. Here we go. All right. We're going to take that spring, line up one of the holes. That spring part there has to go here like that. Now we got to get this other part back here too. That's why we're going to use the pliers. Whoop, whoop, don't fall out. Grab that puppy right there. Get it back behind there. And then push and pull until you get that other hole in there. Come on, baby. Don't make me look like a fool here. I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Springs in. There. How nice was that? All right, let me think. I don't think I forgot anything. We're going to put the tire back on here, and we're good to go. That's a pad slap on a 2013 Mazda 3. Mine's a hatchback, but it wouldn't matter if yours is or not. All right. Hey, I'm going to let you go. If there's anything else you need to know, I'll, I'll enable comments on this video, and we'll see if anybody ever watches this. I might get... Oh, well under 2 million views, I'm sure. <laughs>